In the early 20th century, bananas became a big hit around the world for their color, size, and most importantly, their taste. The United Fruit Company was a huge player in the rapid growth of the banana market. They saw the potential of having a singular banana being the staple of produce. After decades of success, their approach of having one banana turned against them. A disease nearly killed off the entire species. Today when we go to the grocery store or supermarket, we see the big, bright, and yellow banana known as the Cavendish banana. For most of us, this is the only banana we have ever known. Before breeding, bananas came in a variety of different shapes and sizes. They also could not be eaten like normal bananas. These bananas had bitter taste and were too small and had seeds inside them. Some other bananas that still exist are the red banana, the plantain banana, and the rhinehorn banana. All these variations had their own benefits and unique taste when ripened, but they did not have the same appeal as their competitor. The Gros Michel banana was the number one most selling banana in the United States from 1870 to 1950. They had a thick outer peel which made them easy to transport and grew in large bunches. This banana was well loved for its sweet flavor and creamy texture. The artificial banana flavoring in candies today was even modeled after this flavor. Around 1790, Nicolas Boudin, a French explorer, transported the corms from Southeast Asia and planted them on Martinique. He wanted to see if they would grow on an island based on their similar weather and heat patterns. In 1835, Jean-Francois Poyet came across the banana tree and took corms to Jamaica. By the 1890s, it was cultivated along the Caribbean coast of Central America. In the early years of Central America, trade of any kind was difficult without the lack of permanent roads. Thick forests would regrow over passageways, and maintenance was a high price to pay for little profit. In 1871, Henry Meade sent word to his nephew, Miner C. Keith, to stop working on his cattle farm and encouraged him to join his railroad company. Meigs was hired by the Costa Rican government to construct a railroad line from San Jose to Limon. Working conditions were so bad that limited workers from Central America wanted to take on this job. The New Orleans jails offered to help. With the 700 murderers and thieves that he began with, it has been said only 25 survived the end of construction. In 1877, Meigs died and Keith took over operations for his uncle. In 1882, Costa Rica ran out of money for the railroad. Keith would take on the debt himself, and in exchange, he would earn a 99-year lease allowing him to operate the railroad, control of Lehman's ports, as well as 800,000 acres tax-free along the railroad. This obliged Keith to obtain a 1.2 million pounds loan, which permitted him to finish the railroad to San Jose in 1890. Keith secured these loans from private London investors and banks. Over the next couple of years, Keith researched breeding, growing, and harvesting of the Gros Michel banana. In 1883, he had three banana companies, and in 1890, the railroad line was complete. The line was only used for banana transportation. After all of his success, Keith married the Costa Rican president's daughter. He expanded his banana plantations down to Magdalena, Colombia. In 1899, Keith held draw bills in Hoadley and Company, and they folded, tossing him into bankruptcy. With little money left, Keith made a deal with the Boston Fruit Company, merging with them to form the United Fruit Company. The formation of the United Fruit Company put Miner C. Keith as vice president and his old competitor, Andrew Preston, as president. Both of these men settled their differences for long-term success. Costa Rica's exchange of its land for construction of a railroad would be repeated in Honduras and Guatemala. And they gave away their most fertile land in exchange for promises of railroads. These governments saw the long-term potential of railroads, but did not think about the possible repercussions. The United Fruit Company consolidated its power through various means. It installed authoritarian, civilian, and military governments that gave concessions to land, railroads, and ports. It divided its labor force along ethnic and racial lines. It built hospitals, schools, workers' barracks, and houses for its management. And it used massive amounts of pesticides and herbicides in a capital-intensive effort to cultivate varieties of the fruit that North American consumers came to expect, but were susceptible to Panama disease. In the 1950s, the Gros Michel banana tree started to wilt. Nobody knew what was going on, and then massive fields of bananas began to rot. After testing dying trees, a fungus known as Fusorium oxporum infected the soil. The fungus was spread by the workers' boots and the railroad lines transporting the bananas. United Fruit Company's unsustainable farming techniques along with their reliance on a single variety of banana likely led to such exponential rates of loss both monetarily and in bananas. There was no cure and the Gros Michel bananas were almost wiped out. In the 1950s, the United Fruit Company switched to the immune Cavendish banana, a sister of the Gros Michel. 
The Cavendish bananas are still the primary banana and are not out of the woods. The Panama disease mutated and is in its fourth variation. It has been estimated that 80% of global production is under threat from Tropical Race 4. Over the upcoming decades, the United Fruit Company lost their political and financial grip in Central America. Later, they would rebrand two times now known as Chiquita. The banana might change again, but the taste is nothing that can compare to the original Gros Michel. Thank you for reaching the end of this lesson. Claude's History Course teaches history buffs about important world history events. Become a Patreon and have your name listed at the end of each lesson. For more informational videos like these, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Comment down below on which person or event you want to see covered next. We will see you on another lesson soon on Claude's History Course.